What's up, y'all? It's your boy Chance. I know it's super late. I know it's Saturday morning. I get it. But I thought that this is an important subject that I do get a lot of hate for. As you guys know, for the past God knows how long of me finally making it, I've been getting a lot of hate. And I mean a lot of hate. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I felt like this needed to be spoken about because this has really been getting on my nerves. Um, I've been getting hate from guys like LMAO, this other dude that y'all are very well aware of by now, Gavin B. I've been getting shit from him. I've been getting shit in all directions because people don't think I've made it in the music industry as a professional. And what you need to realize is, in a way, I actually did. Like, it might not be, you know, high-paying, high-end. And, you know, that's whatever. But I still made it as a music artist on my own with no help. I mean, obviously, you know, I had the help of, you know, my brothers, you know, Aiden, a.k.a. Young Fox, Bratley, Scrubwell, everybody that you know, my support team, like, they've supported me and pushed me to do it. Like, I've had to help, you know, support-wise, but, like, doing it on my own, like, I do that all on my own. And one thing y'all need to realize is that there's people, there's bands out there, there's artists out there that spend decades, almost a lifetime, their entire lives, just trying to get a fraction of, to the level to where I'm at. A lot of them don't even make it at all. Like, I got very fortunate and lucky to have made it within the 11 years that I did. Yes, it might have taken 11 years to do it, but I still made it nonetheless. Yeah, I might be making a dollar something a day through live streams, and I might be making 30 something dollars every six months, you know, from people buying my albums, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. And it's definitely does pertain to that little asshole, Gavin B, who's been ripping on me, as well as that dude, LMAO, which I'm sure both of y'all are probably watching this secretly. Um, but uh, like I said, one thing you guys need to realize is that, yes, I am a professional music artist. I might not be, you know, to a major label making hundreds of dollars, but so what? I would rather be an underground artist and not have all the cameras in my faces. I'd rather be able to do things my way on my own terms as a music artist. Because not only does that allow me to do what I want to do music-wise, not only does that give me, you know, freedom for my creativity, and allow me to keep all the rights to my work, but it also allows me to do what I want whenever I want. So if I want to take a break, I can take a break. If I want to spend time with my family and do whatever, I can do that and not have to worry. Plus, I don't like the cameras in my face every five seconds of the day. All right. In the beginning, when I first started blowing up, blowing up, and I thought that that's what I wanted, I had that and I hated it. So I went off grid for a few months and kind of laid low until everything died down. And then that's when I picked it back up so I could do things on my own terms. And when Young Fox, when, you know, Young Fox told y'all that, you know, I did make over $300 through you now, which is a live streaming app which is, you know, where you can do live streams and get paid for it. He's right. I did make over $300 doing that. But I didn't invest it in myself. I gave that right to my family to help out with bills and doctor bills and stuff at the time that we really needed the money for. Because, see, unlike you guys, I'm not selfish. I'm I've, you know, I was raised as an army brat. My dad was United States Army Staff Sergeant, 82nd Airborne Division. 
And growing up, I always learned to put others before myself. And that's what I've always done. I've always put everyone before myself growing up. And that's what I am going to continue to do until the day that I fucking die. You know, and like Young Fox over here, you know, like y'all need to, you know, just back off and, you know, chill out because, you know, you guys don't know what I'm capable of doing. Okay. I might not have a massive, you know, a majorly massive fan base, but at least I still have something. And, you know, it's like I told people, I would rather have a couple hundred people to perform for than a couple hundred thousand that don't give a shit. All right? I'd rather play for a couple hundred that actually enjoy my music rather than play for over 200,000 people that don't know who I am, they don't give a shit, and they're probably just there for the merch or whatever. See, my fifth, my fan base is not just a fan base to me. My fan base is comprised of everyone from family, friends, people whose lives I've actually saved that I've gotten messages from, people that I've actually helped and through my music. And do I give a fuck about what the mainstream thinks of me? Not at all. Like... The mainstream and everybody that hates can talk all the shit they want, but at the end of the day, it don't faze me. Why? And you're probably thinking, you know, why it doesn't faze me? Because I learned a long time ago to stop giving a fuck about what people think. And that's what I've been doing. Not giving a fuck about what y'all think. Unless it comes down to you, Tarantula. Unless it's little fuckers like you that want to talk shit about me. Then y'all got no room to talk. And the only time I jump out and say something is if it's actually needed. Like with Tarantula. That's the only time I say shit. Or if it comes to defending the underground and special needs kids as a whole. Because like you guys may or may not. No, you know, yes, I have special needs myself, but compared to most of these kids, mine isn't very severe. Mine's borderline. So, you know, I'm more or less normal. But for those that are special needs, I'll stand up for those kids any fucking day of the week. I if there's a special needs person out there that needed my help right away. I would drop everything I'm like I could be in the middle of recording a song and I'll drop what I'm doing to talk to that kid or to talk to that person and help them out because that that's the kind of person that I am, and I don't plan on changing for nobody. And I do want to thank one of my biggest, not only one of my biggest inspirations, but one of my biggest influences and one of my biggest supporters who I'm actually very good friends with, which is Nadia Loring. Um, she actually, you know, talked to me today for the first time in like a while. Like we sat down and talked a lot today. And honestly, I'm glad we did. Because she's not only been, you know, one of the closest people to me in my life, but she's also been one of my biggest supporters who constantly pushes me. She constantly challenges me to, you know, step outside my comfort zone, which is what I've been doing with a lot of these new corn sounding, you know, songs, a lot of these corn style songs and stuff like that. It took a lot for me to step outside my comfort zone and actually do that. And I'm glad that I did because that gave me a sound that is mine that nobody can take. Like, people are latching onto that sound and really enjoying it.
Um, I do have a brand new album coming out though that's strictly gonna be YouTube based called Shadow Healer. Um, it's actually inspired by the meaning behind my name, which is Shadow Boy. Like it's actually inspired by that. Um, when I was talking Nadia to Nadia today, she actually she made me see my name in a different way that I never would have thought possible. Um, she basically explained it like this, that I'm basically the bridge between good and evil or, you know, the light and the darkness or some might even say heaven and hell. Like, I'm that bridge. You know, I fill that gap. I help people through darkness. Through my dark songs and what I do, I help people. In other words, like I said in that post, I serve the light. I heal people through what I do, through who I am as a dark mannered artist. So that's kind of like where the inspiration for, you know, Shadow Healer came about, which I'm super excited for that. That's coming up. And what you guys don't realize is all those songs I've been putting out that are corn style, those are all songs that are actually going to be on that album. Like, I didn't tell anybody because I wanted it to be a surprise, but, but I figured, you know, what better time than to do it tonight. Um, I do have a new song. Well, not a new song, but um, I'm re-releasing an old track off of one of my older channels called Lock Demon. It's a a really cool dubstep track. It's going to be for Halloween. So for those that, you know, are into Halloween like I am, um, this is going to be a great dubstep track for you guys to rock out to. It's a great song. Um, the movie The Dark Darkness is almost done. It is so close to being done. All I need is somebody that is willing to uh, talk to me on the phone for one of the scenes. Uh, basically, you know, try to convince me to use, like, you know, the things called the spirit box, which is like a walkie-talkie, but communicate with the other side. Um, I've already got the voices set up and stuff like that. I just need somebody to, you know, really convince me. So uh, what y'all are going to do is if you are interested in playing that role, all you got to do is, you know, hit me up, like, you know, call me. And I'll film the scene. But basically all you gotta do is just call me and be like, yo, like I found this new app. It's you know, a spirit box, whatever. You know, and like you really gotta try to convince me to use it. And I'm gonna be like, no way, dude. Like I'm not messing with that. You know, like I've heard bad things, and then you're gonna come back at me and be like you know, like, no, don't worry, man, just, you should try it, just do it, da, da, da. like, you know, like, you really, really, really convince me to do it, and then that, the movie, um, if you do help out with it, and, like, if you do help out with the film, um, your name will be in the credits, you will be credited for your scene as an actor in the movie, um, but that that piece is definitely very crucial to the movie. Like, that is a crucial scene. Um, after that, you know, I'll basically be able to finish the movie off. I've already got the final scene cut out. There might be a sequel. Um, it's, it's a mini movie. Like it's not a full length hour and a half movie. It's actually a mini movie. But there might be a sequel. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But I do have it set up to where it's definitely creepy. Um, it's going to be out before Halloween, so you guys will be able to watch it. That's going to be awesome. Um, it will be on YouTube. It will be under, you know, our films. Um, I might release it through Bloodshot Records. I don't know. I might. I haven't decided yet. But I know for sure that I will be releasing it under my film channel, Dark Star Films, which I'm very excited to release this movie. I've been working on this movie for like a week straight. Um, 
I've been filming like all day, every day, as much as I possibly can. And also, for those of you that are into wrestling, it's only four, I don't know. No, four and a half hours away until Super Showdown. Four and a half hours, man. That's it. Like, I cannot wait to see the legendary match between Triple H and Undertaker. That's going to be awesome. And I, I definitely can't wait to see AJ Styles kick Samoa Joe's ass for everything that he's done. Um, there's a lot going on in Super Showdown that I'm very excited for. But the most thing I'm very excited for is that legendary match between Undertaker and Triple H. I've been getting asked a lot, you know, who do you think is going to win, you know, the match? Like, who do you think is going to be? Blah, blah, blah. Honestly, I don't know. They're, like I said before, they're both very good wrestlers in their own right, their own respect. They're both fucking amazing. Um, I'm a fan of them both. So whoever wins, wins. I don't care who wins. Honestly, I really don't because I'm a fan of them both. I grew up watching the, the both of them as a kid. So, good luck to Triple H. Good luck to Undertaker. You guys are both fucking awesome. I'm very excited for that match. But, um, you know, like I said, for those of you that want to hate on me, which you guys like LMO and all y'all, you guys can hate all, all you want. I really don't care. Because at the end of the day, your comments are then stupid ass self centered opinions. Like, that's all they are. They're fucking opinions that you can take and shove up your ass. Because honestly, y'all don't know me. You don't know my career. You don't know what I'm about. And honestly, you don't know what I deal with on a daily on a daily basis. I'm the only ones that do are people like Allison, um, you know, Young Fox, Bradley, Scrubbelo, and you know, it was close to me. Like, for all you haters out there, like, you don't know what I deal with on this. These guys do. These are guys that I work with every fucking day of the week. So like I said, y'all can have your opinions about me. And y'all can sit there and say that I really haven't made it and da 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 But the fact of the matter is, my hard work speaks louder than words. It may have taken 11 years to get to where I'm at, but you know what? I'm happy with where I'm at. I'm happy that I made it. Even if it's at a starting level for most artists, I'm still proud that I made it. I can look back on my life and say that I made something of myself, that I saved someone's life. Oh yeah, I'm proud to be where I'm at. And whether I make it huge or not, I could care less. But at the end of the day, I'm still a music artist. I'm still a professional. Uh, you guys are talking to the one guy who stood at number one on Reverb Nation for Akron's top dubstep artist. I was number 30 in the nation for almost 10 years. As Akron's number one dubstep artist up until last year. Because I hadn't been on my account in 50 million years. Because I didn't really see any need for it at the time. After, you know, I had made it. But you know what? That right there shows just how talented and how skilled I really am.
I am a professional music artist. And there ain't nobody that can say anything different because my actions and my stats speak much louder than my words. Yes, I might not have thousands of fans, but you know what? I'm okay with that. I'd rather have a few, just a select few or a couple hundred rather than have to sit there and deal with thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of fans that really don't give a shit. And I love and respect every single one of my fans. Because my fans and my supporters, they mean everything to me. And I mean everything. Especially people like Nadia Loring and, you know, one of them, another big supporter of mine, Snowbell, who lives in Singapore. Like, Snowbell's from a completely different country. <clears throat> and she's been supporting my music since the first day. Exactly, man. And that's exactly what I'm saying, Brian. Like, you know, all the haters can do what they want. I give no fucks. But what I do give a fuck about are my fans. Because, you know, I got friends, fans in several countries who support what I do. All right. I know guys like the legendary evil who made it on to BET over in the UK very recently. So shout out to Evil, man. What up, bro? I know guys like Wiggs Wiggins from the UK. I know guys like Christian James, a.k.a. Boy Blue, from Australia. And, you know, not only are they fellow music artists themselves, but they're also very big fans of my work. You know, I've got fans all over the world that I love and respect that I would not trade for anything. You guys can offer me all the money in the world, but you want to know something? I would turn all that money down in a heart for every single one of my fans. Because my fans, you can't put a price on that. You cannot put a price on my supporters or my fans, because my fans are priceless to me. Every single one of them means everything to me. Because no matter what I do, no matter what style I put out, no matter, you know, what I do, no matter what I do, like I can do just straight up artwork and chill and kick it and take a break from the music and they still support it. Like these guys, these people, you guys don't understand. Like these people will ride for my ass. Like these people will jump out on anybody who talks shit about me or about anybody that I work with because they are my biggest fucking supporters. Yeah, they might not have money to, you know, buy a lot of my music, but so what? So fucking what if they don't have the money to buy my music? You know, that's why there's YouTube. That's why there's Spotify. So that those that can't access my music via Google Play or iTunes... And they can go on the Spotify or YouTube and listen to all my music on there. Straight up. So like I said, if you're and you want to talk shit about my career, go ahead and keep talking because that shit talking ain't going to phase me. It's only going to make me bigger. Now, there is one person I do need to, you know, call out. And you guys know I hate calling people out. I don't like doing it. But this person kind of deserves it. And his name is Tarantula from the former record label, which is now disbanded, which is Freak Show Records. 
um, basically Tarantula straight out got pissed because, you know, Freak Show Records died and mine and my little brother Ian's record label, Bloodshot Records, got all the best artists from Freak Show Records. And we formed Bloodshot Records and blew the fuck. But this mother, this little motherfucker decided to take more than just a shot at me. This guy literally made his shot personal. Because you see, when I made a video the other day, you know, basically explaining, you know, my life as a special needs music artist and what I deal with on a daily basis and what life is really like for me outside of the music industry and what I really deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I spoke about, you know, how I was born and how I basically got to where I'm at. Well, this little motherfucker came along on that video and was like, well, let me rip out your other one, you little fucker. Basically telling me that he wanted to kill me. And this kid is only 10 years, 10, 11 years old, acting like a hard ass. When really, he's nothing more than a little kid. And he's not only been threatening me on my videos, he's been threatening, you know, all my co-artists, all my producers, like Young Fox. Um, like, he's been literally sending death threats to these guys. And it's like, yo, Tarantula, which I'm pretty sure you're watching Tarantula, so if you are, you little fucker, you know, you better watch your fucking mouth. Because honestly, you will have your ass handed to you when you least expect it. Because karma will bitch slap you when you least expect it, you little fucker. And honestly, you're lucky you're not in fucking juvenile hall right now. Because do you not realize that you sending those death threats is literally a crime? Do you not realize that? Like, honestly, when I called you out in that diss track, calling you an ICP wannabe, that's all, I wasn't lying. Like, that's all you are. You try to copy ICP, you, you want to be ICP so bad that you feel like, you know, you have to mock them and copy them to the fullest. Well, dude, let me tell you something, man. You ain't nothing more than a fucking, a fucking wannabe copycat. And you sit there and say that, you know, you hadn't quit music. Well, if you didn't quit music, why the fuck did you break your phone and go off grid for several months? Because, see, we didn't take anybody from Freak Show Records at all. Like, we didn't take anybody. They decided to leave and disband Freak Show Records on their own. They came over to Bloodshot Records willingly. We did not pay them. We did not force them. They came over to BSR on And, see, that's one thing you don't realize, Tarantula. Is that unlike your fucking no talent having ass. You know, all of our artists, including myself, have talent. We have some of the best fucking talent in the underground. And you know, the only reason why you got famous, Tarantula, is because of Elucidus. If Elucidus had no collaborated with you on a song, nobody would know who you are. So honestly, if I were you, I would shut my fucking mouth and I'd be thanking people that helped you get to where you're at. You're just a little fucking kid. You need to humble the fuck up. And honestly, your mom and dad should have beat your fucking ass. Especially for the shit that you're pulling. Dude, you're gonna end up in jail for that shit eventually. And...
honestly, when you do, I won't feel the least bit sorry for you, man. Because you will have deserved it. And you can act tough all you want and say that, you know, you're not afraid of the cops. But we all know, deep down, you're just a sad, scared, lonely, pissed off little kid who didn't get his way. So you're throwing a tantrum and taking it out on everybody when really you should be taking it out on yourself. You should be pissed at yourself because you didn't put in the hard work. You didn't what you had to do to get this far. Okay? All of us on Bloodshot Records worked our asses off to get where we're at day and night with no sleep. Well, some of us slept. I, on the other hand, kind of did but didn't. But the point being, we all busted our asses every day, and we continue to bust our asses, constantly improving our craft, constantly mastering, constantly pushing the envelope for the underground as a whole. And what are you doing? Sitting back, sending death threats, and bitching. That's all you're doing. And really, man, what's that bitching doing for you? Absolutely nothing except for getting you in the trouble and starting shit with you. So like I said, dude, you can bitch and whine and complain and send all the death threats you want. But at the end of the day, we all know you're not going to do shit, Tarantula. Which honestly, I don't even see why they call you Tarantula because you're not even dangerous. Like, are you serious, man? You're more like a fucking daddy long leg that I can fucking squish with my goddamn combat boot. Hell, I don't even need a combat boot to squish your ass. I can just put my finger down and squish your ass. Because you don't have any talent. All you do is bitch and complain. Like, you sit there and you say, oh, well, you know, I didn't quit music. And you say all, all this shit. But in reality, you're not aware. All that shit talking, all those death threats, that's not going to get you anywhere. What is going to get you somewhere, though, is you getting up off your lazy motherfucking ass and doing what you got to do. To make it just like we are. Because until you get up off your lazy fucking ass and actually put in the hard work like we did over the last year, you're not going to get anywhere. Plain and simple. In order to get where we're at, you need to book, and you need to put in countless hours of hard work. You need to bust your ass. And honestly, Stop trying to be an ICP copycat because it's not going to get you anywhere. When you do that shit, you sound like every other motherfucker out there that's trying to copy that and trying to be that. Honestly, you're hurting the underground more than you are helping it. Hell, honestly, you ain't even helping it at all if I'm dead honest. You're doing nothing but ruining it. And it's people like you that we try to rid the underground of. Because people like you are a nuisance. You're a poison. You are a sickness. A cancer that needs to be removed from the underground. Because you try to be so fucking try hard desperate to make it that you'll do anything. And I do mean anything. To get your way and get what you want. There have been times when I haven't gotten my way. There have been times where a lot of us haven't gotten our way in the underground. But you know what? We still pulled through. We're still here doing our thing. But like I said, I got lucky to get to where I'm at. 
I'm very grateful to be where I'm at. I'm very thankful and very lucky to even be having my stuff on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, or even motherfucking Amazon. Oh, yeah, I'm proud of that. I'm proud to say that I did something with my life. I'm proud to say that I saved someone's life through my music. Oh, yeah, I get messages a fucking day, and a lot of them I do save. Because a lot of them, once I get my bedroom slash office and recording studio set back up in there, I'm actually going to be taking and having all those printed out and framed up. Because those mean more to me than anything. You know, pieces like that, like that post that I that I did of Jason David Frank's character, Blood from Valiant. One of my fans was also enough to take that post with his comment and like with the picture and print it out and send it to me. That kind of stuff means the world to me. That kind of stuff, you know, is priceless to me. That stuff right there, like from the fans, the letters, the artwork, the posts that I make that they send me, that they're also awesome enough to do that, like the ones that are also awesome enough to do that, like those mean more to me than any award on any given day. I would rather have stuff from the fans than have some stupid trophy or some award that she's going to slip on and show up and rust. The pictures, they'll never fade away. Those will never die out. Those are always going to be there. Ink never fades. Metal rusts. Metal, you know, it gets brittle and it breaks away. But ink and pictures, that shit never fades. I want to tell you something. The stuff that I get from fans, I love it. You know, I love the fans. Whenever I see a fan on the street and they call me by my artist name, I want to sit down and talk with them because they're fucking awesome that way. Because I love and respect every single fan that I come across. And that's something that you haters will never understand. You don't understand what it's like to have a true fan that you are actually able to sit down and have a conversation with. If you want to tell you something, the other day when I was up at the little store, up at the corner here, you know, I met like literally like two or three fans that were out there at the store. And they had actually bought some of my older merch from um, one of my sites where I had some limited edition you know, back in the day, original throwback Shadow Blade gear. And it was super cool to see that. Like, like I don't know their Facebooks. If I had their Facebooks, I would have, you know, gotten the pictures and posted them. But, you know, like they asked if, you know, if they can get a picture with me and stuff. And I was like, hell yeah. You know, I signed a couple things for him, got a few pictures and stuff. Like, I fucking loved it. I love that. I love the fans. I love being able to interact with my fans. And, you know, just being able to, you know, be intimate with my fans to the point of, you know, we can sit down and talk and hang out and do whatever. And I know it might sound weird, but, like, guys like Hobson do the same exact thing. Yeah, Hobson might be a little bit overrated. I get that. But what a lot of people don't realize is whenever he talks to a fan, like he usually winds up hanging out with them. They usually go skating, hang out, play video games, do whatever. And that's how I am. I love my fans. I love hanging out with my fans. I love spending time with them. And a lot of the times... A lot of them are going through bad situations. 
And for them to sit there and say thank you, like, means everything to me. My fans are priceless. My fans, my fan friends, come before anything. And there is no way I would ever trade any of that for anything. So like I said, you want to be a hater? Be a hater. Yo, shout out to Jesse Boone. What is up, my man? How you been, dude? If y'all don't know, man, I actually went to high school with Jesse. What is going on, man? How you been, bud? And by the way, Jess, love the new profile picture, dude. That's fucking awesome. But like I said, my fans, my friends, my family, you can't put a price on those. Yeah, I might not have that many fans, but at least I still have something. Hey, not too much, Jess. Um, I actually am going to message you here in a bit because I actually have something to show you. But anyway, like I said, if you're a hater, you can take your stupid comments, keep them to yourself, and shove those comments up your ass because they don't phase me at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I'm still going to be me. I'm still going to be killing it. You know, I'm still going to be making it in the music industry like I've been doing since June. So if you want to talk shit? Go ahead. You want to rip on my label that me and my brother started? Go ahead. That ain't going to phase us. Dude, that's awesome, man. Congrats, dude. I'm fucking proud of you, man. And yo, if you guys are watching this right now man show some love for jesse and his new baby girl man show them that like that's fucking awesome bro i'm fucking proud of you man Yeah, exactly. Hell yeah. And honestly, if you guys don't know, like Jesse, I know you don't know yet. So like, I'm going to bring you guys up to speed. Um, if you guys don't know, I actually wound up breaking into the music industry as a full-time dubstep artist through the app called the Muse. And what a Muse does is they basically distribute your stuff to, you know, basically everywhere like Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Napster, Amazon, completely free. Like you get to keep 100% of what you make. Um, you get paid every six weeks, every six months. Every six weeks you get paid for a live streams, which I currently have a dollar thirty-four in live streams since June and on December 8th I actually get paid for you know people who actually went out and bought my albums on like Google Play iTunes and stuff like that um, it also gets put out to YouTube Red which is super cool um, it gets put on YouTube everywhere so huge thank you to Amuse like that was a huge help um, you know, like I said, like I've not only been doing music, I've been getting into doing, you know, a lot of photography, a lot of, you know, filmmaking, kind of here and there. But um, if you guys do want the link to Amuse, um, let me know. It is free to use. Um, you can just download it for both iOS and Android. Either way, it works. 
Um, it's actually funded and backed by Black Eyed Peas' very own Will I Am. So that's super cool to see him actually go out of his way to do that. So Jesse, if you want to pick back up a music, dude, I can actually send you the link to that. Like I can actually send you the link to a muse. Like if you are interested in picking back up in music because like i know back in the day you were super passionate about it um yeah i still i um on my deathbed stuff like i still listen to that shit so like if you would like me to you know send you the stuff that i use personally to record my stuff to do what i do you know i can send you all that because all i use is like a few apps like i have a free a couple free studios that I've bounced between and, you know, amuse for putting it out. So, like, if you want all that, Jesse, let me know and I'll send that to you, man. But, yo, Jesse, man, I want to say congrats, my dude. I'm so happy for you, brother. Like, that's fucking awesome, man. I'll definitely do it. I definitely will, for sure. As a matter of fact, I will actually send you the link to my Spotify so you can actually check my stuff out. Turn to the right one. Oh, yeah, that's the right one. But um, what I do is really weird. Like, I put my stuff out through, like, I put my dubstep work out through a music and I have to release. Like, I've released, like, one or two vocal songs through a muse, but most of my vocal work I just put out through mine and my little brother Ian's um, record label, Watch Out Records on YouTube. I usually put it out on there. So you guys can usually catch my vocal work on there. But for the most part, you know, you can catch a lot of my dubstep work at the link, which I just posted up, which is, that's actually my Spotify link. So if you want to check it out on there, you can. Um, like I said, my stuff's all over. It's on YouTube Red, um, Napster. Amazon, Google Play, iTunes. I was basically everywhere. Like, I've really been digging back into my roots, you know, as a dubstep artist. Um, actually, I wound up creating a new genre within that that people are actually really grabbing onto. Like, it's super cool that I was actually able to create a new, you know, sound that people actually are kind of identifying me for. So, like, that was super dope. Uh, I will be releasing more of that. I do have a Halloween dubstep track coming up, which I'm actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play that for you guys real quick so you guys can hear it. And this song I actually wound up doing on my Kindle Fire, which basically is my tablet. Um, I wound up doing it on there back after my stuff went bad. Like, like after my computer crash, I had no other choice but to do my music through that. So. This is locked in. You guys are getting an early listen to this, so. Yeah. <laughs> 
go like that's not the entire thing but that's like most of the song that is actually the new song i'm going to be releasing for halloween called lock demon i actually wound up doing that on my phone after my computer crash I had to do it and you know like obviously i can do it now because i have a chromebook and stuff like i can do it a lot easier but back when i didn't have that i was kind of able to do it that way so glad i had my tablet on hand at the time Really? Uh, I do have an old Facebook page that I am trying to revive, so I might wind up doing that. Like I said, I do have one. I've got so many different fan pages for different stuff that I do. Um, I might have it. I'll have to go back and check it out. I might have it still. I don't know. I'll have to go back and look. And if I don't, I will make a new one for sure. But um, that's definitely weird that you can't click on the link, dude. Like That's super weird. Uh, if you do have Spotify, though, like you can download it. Um, or if you have YouTube, I can send you the link to the to all the stuff on YouTube. Oh, I already know. I already know how to set up, you know, a Facebook fan page. I've done multiple fan pages for different stuff that I do, like my artwork and everything. So, you know, it's all good. And yo, Jess, also, if you were ever in the area around here, you know, let me know. Like, if you ever want to do, like, any photo work or anything like that, just let me know. Because I do actually have this right here, which I actually wound up getting for my birthday because I just turned 28 on September 20th of last month. Um, I actually got these, which are professional... You know, oh, and there goes two of the lenses right there. Um, these are actually professional um, lenses. For, you know, like your phone and stuff. Like I got those right there it's so like if you ever want to get like any photos or anything let me know like i've got a phone just you know hit me up if you ever want to do anything dude like i'm always down for that hey <laughs> thanks dude and believe me i feel a lot older than i am like i'm maybe 28 but half the time i feel fucking 80. it sucks Believe me, if I could stop being old, I would. Straight up. I think we all would. But like I said, Jess, if you're ever, ever down here by Summit Lake, man, just pop in and say what's up and let me know. Like, I'll definitely do some photo work with you, like, free of charge. Because, like, you know, you know, you're basically, you know, family, dude. Like, you, Brett, David, you know, you guys are family. Y'all are family. So, you know, hit me up. Definitely, dude. It was great seeing you, Jess. And like I said, man, if you're ever around, you know, the Lake Shore, Summit Lake area, man, let me know. And we'll definitely sit down and work on some stuff, man. 
Like, definitely bring the kid and everything. Like, that'll be awesome to get some photos for you guys. And also, dude, uh, once again, Jesse, you know, congratulations on the new baby girl, man. I'm super happy for you, bro. Like, that's fucking awesome. And like I said, if you want links to what I use to record and what I do, and also to Amuse, um, I will definitely do that. I'll be sending you those links so that you can check all of them out. Um, they are free to use both via PC and mobile device, so it's really easy to use. You can go back and forth between PC and your phone. So, But anyways, guys, with that being said, I'm actually about to hop off here because I do have a new song that I am working on that I do want to release by tomorrow so i'm gonna sit down record that kick it with some of my friends maybe play some black ops one maybe play some modern warfare i don't know i haven't decided hey no problem dude Always happy to help out, Luke. And also, Luke, I am going to send you some links to some of my newer stuff for you to check out, man. I do have some really cool shit for you to peep. And if y'all have not checked out my boy Luke Rudd, man, check his shit out. The dude's got some amazing fucking shit. So be sure to go check his shit out for sure. Y'all, I'm about to hop off here. So, Jesse, Luke, I'm going to be sending you guys links. Be ready for that shit. And as for the rest of y'all, man, much love. And to my haters, fuck y'all. I'm going to be me. I'm going to do me. I'm still going to be me at the end of the day. And nothing y'all can do phases me at all. So, it is what it is. But with that being said, y'all, I'm out, man. Peace. If I can get this thing to end. Come on. There we go.